Hi everyone, Diana Trout here today to talk about different sorts of journals that you can use for your journaling. I get a lot of emails asking what kind of journals I use, so I'm just going to take you on a wander through the different kinds of journals. Here we go. Well, that's a lot of journals, so let's uh, take things apart a little bit and I'll go through this in categories for you. And I'm going to start with the Moleskin Journal, which is widely available in a bunch of different sizes and uh, paperweights. This is the watercolor, and you can see it is uh, landscape oriented, which I'm not nuts about. I keep emailing Moleskin and tell them to make one portrait oriented. So let's get on a writing campaign on that one. But the paper is super. It's really thick. And it also, I love these rounded corners. Uh, the paper is also pe slightly pebbly, so it really holds a lot of color. Uh, it's, it's great for collage. I do all sorts of things in here, not just watercolor. But it is particularly uh, fabulous for watercolor since it really does hold a ton of color. That's a little crayon resistant watercolor collage uh, somewhere. Okay. Moleskins come in a variety of sizes and this is a smaller watercolor moleskin. Um, really nice for just simple quick little bits of sketches or testing colors that sort of thing. It's a nice size. I like it. This is, by the way, Moleskins are, they're completely black. It's a very neutral book, which is awesome. Uh, I just tend to do a bit of decorating. Sort of really went to town on decorating this one. Now this is a, a Moleskin sketchbook. And you can see the paper is almost like a manila folder, and it's a lighter color than manila folder, but it is not bright white. It's really awesome for drawing. It's great for collage. Uh, yeah, watercolor doesn't work so well on it, but it's a, I love this size, and um, I love the shape of the moleskins, and they're really well put together. <clears throat> they still will. Um, I have noticed that if I leave the elastic band on it, since my journals seem to bulge, it will start to break the binding, which is understandable. So if your journal begins to bulge, you might not want to use this elastic binding. You can just cut that off. Here's a Canson Field Drawing book. It's acid-free 90-pound Canson drawing paper. Uh, it, it, it's a nice book. It's um, a very good for sketching. It doesn't take watercolor fabulously, but it will take a light wash. It certainly would be awesome for um, mixed media. Paper is nice, relatively thick, and uh, the spiral bind uh, is, is really good format for sketching and being working out in the field because you can fold it under. Um, I don't know. This, this thing drives me nuts, so I only use this for sketching. I don't usually use this for art journaling. Um, this coil kind of gets in my way. So, But that is a personal choice. This is a really nice book and I like it. It's plain black. Again, um, I just paint the covers of everything, and uh, it's a good one. Nice, sturdy cover. This is a rag and bone journal. This is also a really nice book. Rag and bone is an online, they're, they're really good book uh, uh, makers. They're online. It's ragandbone.com. They're a little pricey. Paper's really nice. 
a really smooth torn edge, which I adore. Um, really great for drawing. Again, not so great for watercolor, but we'll take light washes. We'll certainly take any other kind of media that you want to use. That's acrylic paints, and I, you know, I, I gesso a lot of things, so it doesn't really matter to me if a paper is good for watercolor. I just sort of make it good for watercolor by gessoing. Uh, really nice for marker, really nice for drawing. So that's a rag and bone, really nicely bound, beautifully bound um, cloth cover. Beautifully done. Real nice book. Let's get into some of my homemade journals or handmade journals, whichever phrase you prefer here. This is a Rescue Book Journal and I this is the pamphlet sewn version. That, that class is actually up online at my blog. And I do enjoy working in this. It's uh, already got, it's, I use a lot of different papers to bind in. And it, so it's, it's sort of got already prompts in it already, which is kind of nice, real nice for journaling. I'm gonna put that in this pile over here. And then this is a really simple hand-bound um, pamphlet book. And I usually use Stonehenge in these. This was this is from 2007, so I don't know. But I use this for a writing class. And I like to, if I'm taking a little class like that, I sometimes do like to just bring something small like that this with me so I'm not bogged down. Here is another handbound rescue book journal. This is Coptic Stitch. Um, again, I used a variety of papers here. Some of them really small and thin. I use a lot of just what's hanging around. Um, a lot of Stonehenge in here, especially in the back section so that I can work with watercolors in here, or acrylics, or collage. I just pick a page, and whatever I need to do, I can. I have paper available for me. So this is, I love these books. These are probably my favorite books to journal in because, um, and it's really a journal slash sketchbook. Um, because it has a variety of paper and I can make my own size. This is a little big for me, but it's kind of nice for a home book. Okay. So, the old composition book. I, I adore these things. I um, use them for writing, and I'm teaching a class right now um, that we're just using composition books for and trying to stretch things out and see what we can do just using a composition book and this gesso gesso and paint I've added a bunch of I'm sort of working back and forth in this one which is kind of fun if I find a hat I like I put it on the hats page a lot of writing in the back you know you can stitch into it we did some stitching cutting pages, making a pocket. These are so versatile, so inexpensive, and just so portable and wonderful. I love composition books. Um, and I've used those since I was a kid in much that same way, which leads me now to the smash books. And I don't know if I just discovered these and really love them. They're just so much fun. I know they're scrapbooky, but I am having a blast. It's almost like the way they come is, let me show you this one because it's not so overworked yet. Um, it comes just like this and the papers in it are all beautiful, really nicely designed graphic papers. Really fun. This one's all about outside. Um, it's kind of recycling green, I guess. And it also has these prompts in here. 
And I know it's sort of, um, some people might turn their nose up at this, but I'm just having so much fun. It feels so low pressure. I'm, I'm going through all of my papers and pages and pages of stuff and just cutting stuff out and sticking it in here. I'm having a really wild and wonderful time with these smash books. So that takes me back to this homemade smash book, which I used a um, roll of bind, roll of bind um, binding on this. But you could put this into a binder. You could put it into anything. Um, and I just got an old file folder, a bunch of old file folders, little scraps of paper, black paper scrapbook paper that I had, or maybe, I don't know, I guess it's scrapbook paper that I had lying around. I sewed a bunch of tabs on the edges of things and just sort of went to town having a good time with that and, and also, you know, put in the occasional piece of Stonehenge because I can't be far from my Stonehenge paper. So that, that pretty much wraps up what I have on my in my inventory and right at this moment I am working with this book I'm going to leave the smash books out of the mix for the moment the composition book this book my big Coptic bound binder and I always dip in and out of this so it's sort of like if I need good paper um, and I want to do watercolors I'll dip in here um, to play or do bigger things, I'll come in here to write. A lot of times writing comes in here and um, just sketching comes in this book. So I do have four journals going on. Um, eh, that's fine. You can choose to use just one or you can use five. I certainly have enough journals uh, to use four. So I hope this helps to solve and clear up any, any questions you might have. Certainly if you have questions, feel free to email me, visit my blog. I'll see you over there. Bye now.